Mascot for the Indianapolis Indians. Minor league team here in town. Webb City, Missouri, Coon Rapids, Minnesota set to go for the right to go to Williamsport and the Little League World Series, which starts this week. Webb City, Missouri, located not that far from Joplin, Missouri, south of Kansas City. They're looking for their first trip to Williamsport since 2002 and just the third overall for anybody from the state of Missouri. Let's meet the kids from Webb City. Hello, I'm Eric Parker, manager of the Webb City Little League All-Star Team from the great state of Missouri, and here are our coaches. I'm Tyler Burgess, bench coach. I'm Jason Woodmancy, first base coach. Here are our players. Hi, my name is Matt Woodmancy, and I lost my voice screaming in the dugout. Hi, my name is Cole Gaiman, and I like wearing crazy socks. Hi, my name is Eli Goddard, and I really like steak. Hi, my name is Blake Smith. My nickname is Wheels with a Z. Hi, my name is Devin Weathers, and I like chocolate. Hi, I'm Kel McAllister, and I hit big flies. Hi, my name is Camden Culver, and I like fishing. Hi, my name is Noah Mitchell, and I like potatoes. My name is Brett Graham, and I'm a rapper. Shout out to all you ladies back home. Hi, my name is Jason Smith, and I like lobster. Hi, my name is Makai, and I love being on camera. Hi, my name is Jackson Cartwright, and I like hitting dingers like Kent Murphy. Hi, my name is Tregan Parker, and I'm an A student. Hey, Mr. Burke, who are we facing today? And what's the scouting report on this pitcher? Did he call you Mr. Burke? He did. <laughs> he did. I'm looking for my dad. But, Tregan, hey, you guys, <laughs> you guys have your hands full this afternoon. Antonio Manos has been an ace for this team from Minnesota. He's going to show you a fastball, curveball, very good command, tough on right-handers, kind of a three-quarter arm angle, Clay. And the question with this team today is can they defend behind him six errors in their last outing? It's very rare that the same pitcher will start every game of the tournament. That's the situation here for Minnesota. Manos starting for the third time in this regional. He's got a tough task right out of the gate. Cale McAllister standing in. His counterpart today on the mound. And it's strike one. McAllister, the best hitter for Webb City. Eight for 15 in this regional. A couple of home runs, eight runs batted in. And the 0 1 pitch hit on the ground and through base hit. So Webb City in business right away here in the first inning. And this is what we have seen, Chris, from Webb City during the regional, especially at the top of the lineup. First four batters yesterday were on fire. Yeah, they can really hit. Notice the shift they got on playing McAllister up the middle, which I'm not really sure why they're doing that because they threw him two straight fastballs in so they didn't pitch towards the defensive shift there. McAllister uses that hole to get things going for Missouri. Here's the center fielder Blake Smith. He's trying to move the runner out in front of home plate. Wow. The catcher Widmer Murray with a beautiful play. Wow. But he can't get him out. Clay he can fly. I mean we hear coaches tell us they got kids that can run. But I think Blake Smith could hit a thousand bunting every time. This ball is right in front of home plate. Whitmer Murray does everything right. And Blake Smith isn't even in the screen there on your TV on the play at first base. This kid can absolutely fly. They call him wheels. With a Z, yes. And here's Devrin Weathers. Well, Webb City is continuing what we saw yesterday at the top the first four batters yesterday nine for 11 they were on base 14 times the old one to weathers and that, that's through into left field for a base hit coming around is McAllister he will score throw gets to the backstop Smith is going to put on the brakes at third now weathers has to dive back into second what a start for Webb City one nothing Missouri and the crowd is loving it. And Clay, if there's a theme that we have seen 
with outfield play this week is struggling to hit the cutoff man as Weathers keeps things going for the top of this order. But Petroff tries to get, throw this ball all the way home, hits the backstop, the runners advance, and Missouri is off to a fast start. And now Cole Kamen as that one sails over his head. Smith scores. Ball rolls up the first baseline, but Weathers is going to stay put at third, and it's 2 nothing here in the first inning. What a, hit the ball, kid. What a fast start from Missouri, and Clay, you hit on it. The top of this order has got some serious playmakers and a ton of team speed, and Blake Smith on a ball that really bounced right back to Widmer Murray scored easily. And Manos is taking a little time out here to try to collect his thoughts and regroup. That's a ball to Gaiman, who had the only extra base hit against South Dakota yesterday. Three for four with a double and three runs batted in. The 2 0 pitch. Green light hit hard to third, knocked down by Miles. Taylor comes up throwing. Got him, but it plates another run. And Missouri has scored three times here in the top of the first. What a chance to take take a deep breath here after Miles Taylor makes a nice play to knock this ball down, get to his feet. Notice how he bare hands it and throws in one motion. And the bases have cleared. Yes, they've given up a three spot, but a big out in the ball game there for the Minnesota club. And just confirming that that was an out of first base. Kenton Bottoms is their home plate umpire. Steve Wagner working first. Tony Calcagno at second. Mike Deming at third. Kenton Bottoms, native of Kentucky, calling the balls and strikes. Line drive and the first baseman, Parker Roloff, plays it perfectly. Two down. Everything squared up so far here by the Missourians. Yeah, and Manos is going to pound the zone. It's what he does. And for Missouri, as good as they've been offensively, there's going to be some hits available to them. Minnesota making some plays behind them, which is what they're going to have to do. Strike to Matt Woodman. See the scratchy voiced left fielder. <laughs> he is the son of Jason Woodman. See one of the Web City coaches. The young one pitch. And it's fouled off. I got the story on the grass in the Jersey superstition. They played on an all dirt field. There was mm -hmm. one blade of grass. He decided to, to get rid of it, you know, because it was all dirt. So he gets rid of it. He puts it in his pocket. The next inning, they score a bunch of runs. People are hitting homers. He's getting base hits. Ever since then, that's been a superstition. Put, put some grass in his jersey. Whatever works for him. Yeah. Got the outside corner. That ends the inning as Manos walks to the dugout after the strikeout. But. A big inning for Missouri. They get three in the first. We are. Hey. Had a baby, Dev. Hey. A baby. We're going deep. Nice one. Nice hit. That was pretty sweet. Good job, boys. I thought we were going to be hit. Got it, too. Close that a little bit. Yeah. I don't think they're going to. That's what I did on the last one. Yep. Boys, let's get five. Hey, Boo, here you are. Good job. Hey, all that for 12 pitches? Huh, nothing wrong with that. They weren't even hitting you that hard. All right? Let's go to work. We're all right. Hey, light this thing up, would you? Yeah, I will. Light this thing up. Truth be told, we knew this was going to be a scratch down drag out, so we like that. We like that. So now we got to scratch back a little bit here, and leaders lead. All right. Antonio Manos only threw 12 pitches in that first inning for Coon Rapids, but Missouri got three runs on three hits. Good start for them. Let's see what Coon Rapids can do as a response. 15 miles north of Minneapolis, 62,000 folks in Coon Rapids. The seventh regional tournament appearance 
Coon Rapids went to the Little League World Series in 2007. Let's meet the kids. Hi, I'm Rick Roloff, manager of the Minnesota State Champion Coon Rapids Cardinal Little League, and here's my coaching staff. Hi, I'm Jason Halverson, and I am your third base coach. Hi, I'm Brian Robidoux. I'm the first base coach, and here's our team. Hi, my name is Sam Helverson, and I want to give a shout out to my to the 11 year old All Stars and my grandpa. Hi, I'm Gabe Robidoux, and I have the best hair. Hi, my name is Jennings Dramu, and I like smiling. My name is Connor Ostrander, and I want to give a shout out to my friends. Hello, my name is Isaac Johnson, and fanny packs are life. Hi, I'm Caleb Chester, and I like to unicycle. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tony Manos, and I like talking to girls. Hi, my name is Diego Weisenden, and I like to eat pizza. Hi, my name is Aiden Widmer Murray, and I love to play sports. Hi, my name is Ricky Petroff, and I like to ski. Hi, I'm Jack Velocity, and I like to jam out to tunes. Hi, my name is Parker Roloff, and I like to hunt and fish. Hey, my name is Miles Taylor. I'd like to give a shout out to Darius Carline. Hey, Mr. Berg, who are we facing today? And what's the scouting report on them? Miles, you guys got your hands full this afternoon. You got Cale McAllister, a tough left hander, fastball, cutter, change up the cutter, kind of has a slider action, kind of a bigger cutter. But this is a guy who has thrown plenty of innings in this tournament, and certainly the moment won't be too big for him. Making his third start, he's got a win. In this regional, he'll face Gabe Robidoux to start. First pitch is inside. Robidoux tearing the cover off the ball here for Team Minnesota. 875. Seven for eight with three runs batted in. And he's got good hair. And he's got great hair. He's 13 years old. These kids are mostly 12. Players couldn't have turned 13 before May 1st. That's the cutoff line in the major division. 2-0 pitch. Yep. It'll be interesting to see here, Chris, how Minnesota responds after that gut punch from Missouri in the top of the first. Yeah, things have gone pretty smoothly for them in this tournament. Now they find themselves down three early. Can they bounce back? Trying to bunt his way on. Now it's two and two. Rabadou might be the toughest out on this team, as we've seen. His coach, Brian Robidoux's son. And Cale McAllister winds and fires. That was up in the zone, and Robidoux jumped on it. Line drive, base hit to right, and just as Missouri started with a single in the top of the first, Minnesota counters in the bottom of the inning. What a good little player this kid is. Watch him get to the middle of this pitch up around his chest. Look at the backside barrel control there as he rips that ball into right center field. And those numbers didn't happen on accident. This kid can really swing the bat. And here comes Minnesota in the home half. And big Miles Taylor to swing a bat for the first time today. <laughs> How about that? 5'10, 205 pounds. Maybe the best raw power for Minnesota, and he's trying to move it along with a butt. Tried to trick him. Tried to trick him. I'm not saying. I don't know that I agree with that move, but I guess as the third baseman Gerard was played back, he was going to try to drop one down. But my guess is we're going to see a swing here. Oh, nice Big strike call there from Kenton Bottoms. Nobody who stays put at first base. His nickname is The Beast, built like a vending machine. Also <laughs> plays football. His dad, JT, a assistant football coach in Coon Rapids. That's outside, so one and two. That's probably his best sport, but what we've seen from him this week is he's a pretty good ball player, too. Mm -hmm. Caught in the semifinal game and did an excellent job back there playing third base today. The one two pitch. Struck him out in a fist pump from Cale McAllister. 
get a good look at the breaking ball here. Good pitch, that was a good pitch. Kale McAllister throws a nasty back foot slider to record the first out, and now Antonio Manos will get his crack as the potent top third of this order trying to respond in the bottom half. The big three, Rabadou, Manos, Weisner. Almost 700 average. The rest of the team, not so much. So these are the guys they've been leaning on. Manos, 750 average with eight runs batted in. Four for four, seven ribbies Monday against Iowa. Two for four against South Dakota with a run batted in on Thursday. Puts it in play, left side. Gerard. And they're only going to get one. Kai Girard knew he didn't have a ton of time. Got it over to second for the force. And there are two away yeah, from the Minnesota first. Difficult play, though. Difficult play, and he made it look easy, Clay. Look how he bodies that ball up and in one motion throws this ball to Gaiman, who makes a nifty little turn just to touch Tardy. But Missouri's showing you some nice leather here in the first inning. I'll bring up Parker Roloff. Manager Rick's son. Bat in the cleanup spot for Minnesota. Minnesota had a bye on Sunday. And then they won 11 to 7 over Iowa Monday, beat South Dakota 15 to 7 in Thursday semifinals. 26 runs in their two games. But no home runs, no triples, and only five doubles. They kind of small balled it. They have the two games. And South Dakota certainly aided in that process. So if you're Missouri, you feel like if McAllister can come out there and throw strikes and the defense backs him up, they got a chance. Left side, deep short, the throw in time. Tragen Parker got it to Gaiman just in time to beat Robidoux. Just a beautiful play by the middle infield here. Parker understanding how much time he has and credit Cole Gaiman for making like a first baseman here on a stretch to get Missouri off the field, 3-0. Maybe we'll see that kid in 2018. You can watch these games later today here on ESPN, the Northwest Championship. That'll be at 3 Eastern. We'll be back here for Kentucky and Wisconsin in the Great Lakes title game. Mid-Atlantic semis at 7 Eastern and the Championship of the West at 9 Eastern. Here's our division at a glance. Kids 11 to 13, mostly 12. It's a six inning game on a field two thirds the size of a big league diamond. Everybody gets to play. You see the modified double elimination format. That's been interesting to watch play out here this year. For Missouri, they didn't receive a bye. So they're playing in their fifth game. Minnesota just its third game today. And Minnesota the more rested team. They got their full complement pitching and had a lot of time to watch the other teams play. Meanwhile, Missouri has slugged it through the loser's bracket, but so far today, Missouri is the sharper team. No question, they have come out razor sharp, Clay, and Kale McAllister looked really good. Gonna be a tough matchup for Minnesota. But Manos is now at the bottom half of this order. Let's see if he can have an easier inning and throw a zero up and get them back in swinging the bats. They have made some defensive moves. Minnesota now with Miles Taylor behind the plate catching Manos. You mentioned it earlier, Chris, that you know he started the game at third. Mm -hmm. We might see him a catcher. They made the move fairly early. Yeah, they did, which is interesting because he certainly looked good at third base as well. But. They, they know their team, and they know exactly why they do what they do. Ground ball to first. Man, it was covering, had to hurry, and he got there. Beat Makai Girard to the bag, one down. Good fundamental baseball right here, Clay, as the pitcher does a good job of getting over. Watch the break he gets off the mound here to help his first baseman out. A nice, solid feed to beat Girard, and a big first out recorded for Minnesota. I'll bring up Jason Smith, the right fielder for Missouri. This is the first day here in Indianapolis where we haven't had sunshine. Mm -hmm. 73 degrees, mostly cloudy here, but there is not a lot of wind. What we do have, though, is blowing out. 
Swung on and missed the ball and a strike. Beautiful field here. It's 225 to the corners and 225 to straightaway center. Bases are 60 feet apart. It's 46 feet from the mound to home plate. There's Eric Parker, 41-year-old IT manager when he's not coaching Little League for Team Missouri. And that's three and one. Okay. Hey, let's go. I don't hear you. You know, so much of what we've seen from these coaches this week. It's just, go, it, it's being a psychologist, keeping kids positive. Yeah, and it's the emotional swings can be quite dramatic at this level, no question about it. Lost him, walked him. And whether it's trying to keep them down or to get them up, these coaches have to constantly be monitor monitoring the, the emotional swings of these young athletes as they are all geared up, obviously trying to make it to the Little League World Series. Such a big goal and one that they all want so badly, the coaches have got to try to keep them even keeled. Eli Goddard, the nine hole hitter now for Webb City. Time. Time called. And this is one of the offensive timeouts for Webb City. Hey, stroke it. Let's go. I think we're getting a bunt. I think that was the old, hey, let's bunt here. And then as he's walking away, trying to deke the other team. But with Kale McAllister on deck, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a bunt to move the runner into scoring position. And you read that right. Uh, they're not even going to need a bunt. Smith now in scoring position for Webb City. Now that's a gift. We got time. From Team Minnesota. It really is. And I tell you what, the, the free 60 feet, the free bases that the teams give up really have a big impact on the way these games unfold. And you just. They were going to give you an out to advance 60 feet. You gave it to them without the need of sacrificing an out. Such a big advantage here for Missouri. So Antonio Manos gave up three in the first inning, trying to dig deep here and keep Missouri off the board here in the second. Ball and a strike to Goddard. Is Eli's dad looking on. Great crowds here this week, especially for this Midwest final. Winner goes to Williamsport. League World Series starts on Thursday. The 1 2. Again, cute off the end of the bat. Last year, Seoul, South Korea. Look fast. Won it all. Be ready, Jason. The international Be field ready. is set this year with the exception of Canada. They'll crown a champion tomorrow. The one two. And this is a this is a win for me for Team Missouri. Goddard continues to work this at bat and running up the pitch count of Manos, who even though he gave up three runs, didn't throw a ton of pitches in the first, but nobody's really seen a ton of depth out of Minnesota's pitching. So if you can get the pitch count up. We ground ball to short, charging Wiseman. Good throw. Got him at first, but then advancing to third on the play is Smith. Good base running again by Webb City to get to third base. And the top of the order, McAllister coming up. Yeah, what a nice base running play here by Jason Smith. You got to love the patience as he just bided his time until Wiseman chose to throw that ball to first base. Of course, had to get the out. And watch here how he hangs on the bag. He's going to let Wisen and think he's going to stay and then takes off. And we know with the propensity of pass balls at this level or wild pitches, that's a big advance right there. McAllister jumps on the first one. No doubt about it. Home run. You could hear that one leave the yard. A two-run shot for Kale McAllister. 
his third of the region, and it's 5-0. Yeah, Clay, and the top of the order just continues to be dynamite for Team Missouri. A first pitch breaking ball that just floats over the middle of the plate. And this McAllister kid, he's some kind of player. As you see him separate and deliver the barrel to the back of that baseball. Terrific path through the zone that allows for great carry. And a five spot quickly for the Missouri kids. Huh? Uh, the top four continues to rake, 13 for 17, nine runs batted in. You've done everything since I've watched you play ball since we were seven years old, all right? Just do what you know you can do, and the rest is just fine, okay? Just keep battling, keep battling, stay in the game, all right? Just keep working. All right, guys, here we go. And Antonio Manos. Pep talk, Jason Halverson, and Cale McAllister now. Three homers in the regional. He's got nine since the start of district play. And that'll bring up Blake Smith. And that bunt single. And a run scored in the first inning. And this is the fastest kid that we have seen in this regional. Uh, I would say that's a no doubter. And I said it last time, I think he could hit a thousand if he bunted every time. Looks like he's going to swing at this A-B. Oh, that's crunched. He nearly put it in the parking lot. Back-to-back -back homers for Webb City. And it's six to nothing. Now, who needs the bunt when you can swing it like that, Clay? Showing you some versatility a bunt hitting his first at bat they're trying to climb the ladder and misses right down Broadway and watch the barrel get through this baseball kind of a sawed off almost Chase Utley type of finish and he launches this one brother this is a good 50 75 feet over the center field wall for another run for the kids from Missouri and another dangerous bat in weathers at the plate Weathers, a single and a run scored in the first inning. And he is their team leader in home runs. Brown ball to second. Robert puts it to first. And that'll end the inning. But another three-run inning for Webb City. Let's take a look at her subway fresh take. And for Webb City, they have been pounding it. They're seeking the first trip to Williamsport for Webb City since 2002. They lost the first game of the regional, but since then, outscoring opponents, if you include this game, 45 to 9. And Coon Rapids trying to get back to Williamsport for the first time since 2007 when Coon Rapids National went to Williamsport. They have also scored a lot of runs in their games here in the regional, but so far, it's been all Web City. Yeah, let's take a look at a couple of these swings that produced the home runs from last inning. First McAllister, and you're going to see a little bit of a flatter path as he hits more of a line drive home run to right center field. Now for Blake Smith, it's a little more low to high, and you can see that was a higher fly ball out to straightaway center field. So you see two different paths, one left-handed, one right-handed, one a little flatter, one a little more uphill, but when on time, both swings produced balls that went way out of the ballpark. Ricky Petroff is going to lead it off here for Minnesota against Kale McAllister. Petrov two for eight during regional play. Tried to hold up, strike one. Minnesota has 13 on its roster, so everyone will bat at least once. That's the situation for Missouri, too. The mandatory play is if it's 13 or more, everyone has to have at least one at bat. If it's less than that, six consecutive defensive outs and at least one at bat. Little League does a great job making sure everybody gets in. And with some of the idiosyncrasies with the rules, mm -hmm. the special pinch runner, for instance. And there are just ways that they make sure that the kids have an opportunity to get into the game. 
substitution rules are very liberal. Yeah, it's an absolutely a team effort. If you are if you are playing Little League Baseball, it is a team game. Everybody gets a chance to impact the baseball game. And I think that's one of the reasons why kids love this venue so much. They love this league and, and this tournament so much because of the team camaraderie and the way that everybody is a part of the action. Goddard with a quick chat with McAllister. He's back behind the plate now. Here comes the 3-1 to Petrov. Yeah. Full count. Walked him. Lead off man on again for Minnesota. And here's the mandatory play description. And again, both of these teams have 13 on their rosters. And usually around the third inning is when we see the coaches start to substitute, start to send up pinch hitters. Because there's only six innings to mm -hmm. work with. Diego Wisenen at the plate. The D train, he's 13 years old. One for four against Iowa in Minnesota's first game. Two for three with a couple of doubles against South Dakota. Here's a guy who's got a frame too, Chris. That well, he does. He has a lot to work with. He he's going to grow into it and be a great looking athlete. Got kind of an old school stance. Look at all the weight on the back leg, real vertical with his legs, front leg straight. As can be, just an interesting stance. Chops that one foul. It's one and two to Wiseman. And I say old school because now in the in, in the world of, of so much coaching and so much video, you see guys a little more, you know, weight evenly distributed, more in an athletic stance. But in the old days, you got some more flair and a little more personality in some of their stances. McAllister off the mound. Got him. Good throw by Cale McAllister fielding his position. He had a long way to go off he the did. mound for that ball and still was able to get wise in it. Uh, uh, the athleticism here of a lefty. Watch him change his feet right here. Square your feet up and deliver the baseball on time and on target. This is an athletic move right here from McAllister. Watch him square the feet and throw a strike. Good stretch by Weathers to finish off wise in it. Petrov goes to second base on the play and Jennings Jermu will hit for the first time for Coon Rapids. Hard-working outfielder. Had the big two-run walk-off infield hit to win the district finals in Minnesota. Something you don't hear about very often. No. That one got away from McAllister. 2-0. Chopper over the mound. Runners on second and third. Third base coach just kept them coming. And as the runner beat the play at first base, the runner who had started on second comes around to score. and. They were state champs. Timeout call. Here comes Eric Parker. Hey, up here. Up here, up here, up here, up here. Up here. Yeah, you will. No, no. Hey, listen, listen, stay up, stay up. Hey, I know you got adrenaline still in you from that home run, okay? Relax. Hey, we don't want to give him a couple here. Okay? Let's let's get out of this inning right here. Just like you're in your dad's garage throwing strikes. Okay? Right to the mid. Have fun with it. Smile. Guys, if you're talking, Tregan, I don't want you starting so deep. Start with your She's gonna creep. I know, but start with your heels on the grass and creep, please. Okay? All right, let's go, guys. Let's go. Just let's like you're in your dad's garage. Love it. Love it. He must have some reps in that garage is why he's as polished as he is. For more information on Little League Baseball and the Little League World Series, go to ESPN Baseball Tonight's Facebook page, facebook.com slash ESPN Baseball Tonight. Jermu at the plate for Minnesota. There's a strike, two and one. We uh, really appreciate the coaches wearing these mics. We get to hear so many great mm -hmm. conversations. And we will have that access in Williamsport as well. 2-1. Yeah. And on the hands, again back to McAllister. Flips it over to Weathers. They're two down. And Petroff now 60 feet away from Minnesota's first smart, run. Okay? We got to get a run if we can. So but we McAllister here, doing a little bit of everything. He is. And and I, the base, okay? It's been Keep very it impressive like to, to see the way the pitchers right? have like fielded so their we positions in both of the regionals that we are here covering, both the Midwest and the Great Leaks. Devin Pfaff from Ohio yesterday put on a show on the mound, and now McAllister doing the same. Isaac Johnson. 
funny kit for Team Minnesota. <laughs> he is the uh, team clown. He was the one during the introductions who's in love with fanny packs for whatever reason. Fanny pack life, Clay. Yeah. He's uh, been subscribed pitching. to that. No, I, I don't even no. know what he's talking about, to be honest. <laughs> Nor do I. Wants to be an astronomer when he grows up. Almost hit sharply, but outside of first. One and two. Go for it, get one back to you. <laughs> these intros have been fantastic. Getting to see these kids' personalities and. We, we've seen some new things this week, haven't we, Clay? And Fanny oh, Pack yeah. Life is right at the top of that list. There's Ike's dad. I wonder if he carries a Fanny Pack. Maybe. Maybe that's where he got it from. Generational deal. McAllister rocks and fires the one two. Tried to get Johnson to chase it away. Did not. Two and two. Block of cheese, Nickel. Here we go. That's uh, Johnson's other nickname, the Block of Cheese. Ooh, that came in on his elbow. Hit him. And Isaac Johnson will take his base and out. Runners at the corners for Minnesota. They got something going here with two outs, down 6 nothing in the second. Yeah, big at bat in the game. You don't know how many run scoring chances that McAllister's going to allow. So for Widmer Murray, a really big A-B, just the second inning. But certainly at bat, his team needs him to come through with. Aiden Widmer Murray started the game behind the plate, has moved to center field. This is his first trip to the plate today. He is the fastest guy on this team for Minnesota. Big at bat here for the team from Coon Rapids. Try and become the seventh team from the state of Minnesota to get to Williamsport. McAllister misses down. One ball, one Widmer Murray, one of those very handy guys, one you'd like to have on your team. He can he can pitch. In fact, he's their number two arm. Backup catcher, despite being left-handed. Sprays that one foul. He's one of those guys who can put him just about any place on the field and he'll get it done for you. Trying to deliver here at the plate for Minnesota, who needs some offense. Ball and two strikes. Got it. Big strikeout for McAllister as Minnesota strands two in the second. Yes, it was. We see the big breaking ball. We've seen the cutter. We've seen the fastball. And now the big breaking ball by Cale McAllister to get him out of a jam. He has hit us a home run, and he has been dominant on the mound for this team from Missouri. Cale McAllister putting on a show getting Missouri back in the dugout with a six-run lead. Honestly, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? And we're going to go on with life just the way we always do, right? This isn't about winning. This is about how you got here. That's the beauty of it, guys. We can't lose today. It is impossible to lose this game, and that's the fun stuff. All right? So try and take the emotion out of it. And remember, all the good things that you did to get here, that's the beauty of why we're here. That's the only beauty that we possibly can want. So go out there and keep fighting like you guys have done every single day that we've been together for two months. We've taken one day off in two months, guys. One day off. And the worst thing that can happen? Jason Halverson trying to keep the Coon Rapids team light and positive. And speaking of managers, all day tomorrow on Sports Center, from a small town to the big leagues, Joe Madden's had quite the ride. Took a trip down memory lane with the Cubs' first-year skipper. Sports Center featured presents right, just an average Joe. It's all day tomorrow on Sports Center. Cole Gaiman leads it off for Webb City, Missouri, leading six nothing here in the third. This is the midway point now of this contest that decides who's going to go to Williamsport, Pennsylvania as the champion of the Midwest region. Boy, that's crunched. Extra bases here for Cole Gaiman, who continues to have a red-hot bat. 
hit parade. It really is. And the top of the order, you just can't say enough good things about them. The way they continue to produce. The only good news for Minnesota and Antonio Manos is now they're through the top four. But this kid right here is a line drive machine, as you just see. Well, look at the barrel control here. Flat to the back of that baseball. Even though that pitch is up in the zone, he's able to get to it and rip it down the left field line. And looks like we're going to get a pitching change here, Clay. Antonio Manos. He's been the starter for Coon Rapids in all three games here in the regional. Is out of this game. As Missouri now has six hits in this ball game. We're going to take a break. Pitching change for Coon Rapids. Aiden Widmer Murray coming on. Back in a moment. Well, Antonio Manos has been terrific for Minnesota throughout this regional. But Missouri was able to square him up right from the first batter here today. Well, they really were, and he just had no answers for the top of the order. And that is why they find themselves down six runs, and they're going to go to a change of pace here with Aiden Widmer Murray, who's going to show you kind of the typical soft toss and lefty, a fastball change up, curveball mix, and see if he can solve this Missouri lineup who has been so tough over the last couple games. This will be his third appearance. Aiden Widmer Murray has pitched a couple of innings. One earned run. Over that span has struck out five. He's punted back to the screen by Parker. Webb City, Missouri. Got one strike. Trying to become the third team from that state to reach Williamsport. And the second team from Webb City. As the Little League got there in 2002. Catching the outside corner is Widmer Murray. It's nothing in two. Boy, this offense has been fun to watch. 45 runs the last three days. And now a strikeout here. Good start for Aiden Widmer Murray as Parker goes down, and that's going to bring up Matt Woodmancer. Can they manufacture a run here in the bottom half of the inning? Excuse me, with the bottom half of the lineup. You get the leadoff double from Gaiman, and now Parker strikes out. Wood Mancy's got a chance to drive a runner in, or at the very least, advance them. Any runs they get out of the bottom half is a bonus. Wood Mancy struck out against Manos. Sends this one to left field, charging his Petrov. And make the catch. They're two down. Nice play by Ricky Petrov. Good read. and able to finish that play as it kind of sinking down and away from him and two quick outs recorded by Widmer Murray. Nice start to his outing. Well so far it appears that the pitching change may have worked for Coon Rapids a couple of outs since Widmer Murray came on. Kai Girard the next hitter. And Webb City's trying to figure out if they can use a special pinch runner, and it appears that 
they cannot in that situation. No, I, I, he tried to use a, a pinch runner who's in the game. Parker is, is in the game, and that's why he was called Cole. back. So, game it stays out at second base. Where's number 42 in honor of Jackie Robinson? Two more. No strike. Six runs and six hits for Webb City. Now three and one. Kai Girard, his nickname is Mickey. Starting at third base, puts it in play hard right through the wickets of Rabideau. And that's going to score another run. And that was smoked right at Rabideau, and it's going to be the first error of the game for Team Minnesota. Look at him stay back and drive this ball right through Rabadou's wickets, but credit Makai Girard there, who saw that off-speed pitch early, waited and delivered the barrel on time for another run scoring hit. Um, he throws a floating curve, okay? So you're fast enough to catch his fastball. If you see that thing floating up there, then rock back and just get it over the fence, okay? Hey, back there. Don't just put it in play. No, get it over the fence. Yeah, just just rock back out. and hit it out. <laughs> That is great coaching, and if he follows that advice, he'll make a lot of money in this yeah, game. Right. Jason Smith is up there, a walk and a run scored. Boy, that ball was really hit hard at Robidoux. It's an error, the first of the game for Minnesota. They had six in the field against South Dakota. That allowed Rapid City to kind of stay in the game on Thursday played better in the field here today and you really have a hard time faulting Robidoux as hard as that was smoked. Yeah, that ball was hit right on the button. And contributions now from the bottom half have extended this lead to now seven runs. And I tell you, with, with the, the top four coming back up next inning, you start to think about that 10 run roll if, if Minnesota can't score any runs here in their chance in the bottom half. Struck him out. So Aiden Widmer Murray comes out in relief, holds Webb City to one in the third. And Missouri now leads it seven nothing after two and a half. ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes from Indianapolis, Indiana. Alongside Chris Burke, I'm Clay Manfick. How about that outfit? I haven't seen that before. <laughs> Pretty good right there. The new $1.8 million Little League Grow the Game grant program was created to provide local Little Leagues the resources they need for general improvement to help recover from a natural disaster or to expand or establish Little League softball, Little League Challenger Division, or the Little League Urban Initiative. For more information, visit littleleague.org forward slash grow the game. Well, it's 7 nothing. Webb City, Missouri, with a berth in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in the Little League World Series, which starts on Thursday on the line. Minnesota's got some work to do. They have been very offensive in their two prior games here in Indianapolis. 26 runs in those two games total, but nothing so far today against Cale McAllister, who starts work here in the third. And misses down to Gabe Robidoux, one of the guys in the Minnesota order who has been very, very tough to get out. In fact, just one time he hasn't produced a hit in the entire region. Pretty good. Eight for nine, if you like that sort of thing. And there haven't been many cheapies in the bunch. He's been hitting rockets all over the field. Last time McAllister left one up. Does again, but that time, Rabadu just missed it. He got behind his last at bat and still hit a line drive into right center. So McAllister going to have to execute a quality pitch if he's going to retire Rabadu.
got to hurry. Rabideau very quick, but Gaiman throws him out. I really like Cole Gaiman's game, too. Oh, absolutely, and he's been raking all tournament, but what I like here is the ability to transfer the baseball without the need of a shuffle, and it's such a short throw. Watch how he throws this ball without moving his feet and almost treats it like a shortstop feeding a double play ball. That would allow, that's what allows for such a quick release and being able to retire Robidu. Again, the base is just 60 feet apart. You don't have a ton no, of time. No, you don't, especially with a guy getting down the line like Robidu does. So the ability to transfer the baseball all in one motion allows for him to retire that play. Minnesota just one hit so far. It came from Rabadou back in the first inning. In fact, it was a leadoff hit. First hitter of the game for Coon Rapids. Nothing since. One of the earmarks of good middle infielders is you got to have a lot of different arm angles and you got to be able to do different things with your feet to allow yourself to be in a position to make different types of throws. Cole Gaiman executed that beautifully. Three and one here to Taylor and Dad JT looking on. McAllister has to tread lightly here. This guy can ride it out. Full count. You know, Taylor, you know, in a world today where we got a lot of kids that feature a lot of swag, my man is old school. Look, no, no wristbands, no, no batting gloves. I'm not sure what he's got going with the pants there. This is an old school throwback guy. Lockton. Well, we said it before, football might be his best sport. There's Dad JT, who's a football guy, football coach. Baseball's probably just a hobby for this kid. Yeah, he, we asked him in game one what would he like best about baseball, and he said hitting the long ball. <laughs> he also plays basketball, too. Oh, yeah, three-sport guy. Which is great. Absolutely. And Little League Baseball really encourages that from the kids. Back up the middle, and that rolls through. Coon Rapids now showing some life offensively. A couple of base runners here with one out in the third inning. Well, the top of their order has some firepower, too. A walk and a base hit. McAllister mad at himself. He wasn't able to catch this ball. Just short arms it. Well, that could have been a potential double play ball, but now Minnesota with their best run scoring opportunity here, a chance to get right back in this ball game. Good to see Manos deliver a hit after having a tough day on the mm -hmm. mound. And now Parker Roloff. Oh, runner goes. Got him. Taylor tried to steal the base and he's easy, thrown easy. out. Minnesota being aggressive on the base pass, and they're going to get a. Oh, they got him at third, too. What'd you see? Manos overslid the base at third, and Missouri gets a huge break here in the inning. Minnesota with two on and just one out, but they run themselves out of it. And you talk about a momentum shift. Play from down seven with a couple runners on, thinking they can get back in the game. Two runners caught at third base, and Missouri gets off the field. Still up, still up seven nothing. Seven to nothing. As we move to the fourth inning, Missouri trying to get on to Williamsport in the Little League World Series. Minnesota had a threat going in the bottom of the third with two on and just one out, but. The, they made some mistakes on the base paths. Yeah, they ran themselves out of an inning, Clay. They made this is the second out at third base in, in an attempt to steal third. And, and Manos was called for sliding through the base. And I'm just not sure his hand ever actually left the bag. It looked like he was able to keep his yeah, fingertips pitches, down pitches. the whole time. But Mike Deming saw it differently, and Missouri gets off the field with another zero. Even though they had a walk and a base hit in the inning, Minnesota still scoreless. Here's a look at the rest of the programming schedule for today on ESPN as tickets are being punched to Williamsport today. 
from the Northwest, Oregon, and Idaho. That's coming up at 3 Eastern time. We'll be back here at 5 Eastern for the Great Lakes title game. Kentucky and Wisconsin, that's a rematch. Maryland and New Jersey in a semi, and in the West, Southern California and Hawaii. That's at 9 Eastern. Kentucky came back in the bottom of the six, down three yesterday to beat Hamilton, Ohio. A terrific comeback. Now they get a rematch with Wisconsin, who tend to run them earlier in the week. And they're faces, facing Marcus Thompson, who threw a perfect game in his only outing in this tournament. But they got Eli Burwash on the mound, who punched out 15 in his only start. So it should be a terrific pitching matchup in game two. Camden Culver's at the plate for Webb City. Again, each of these teams has 13 players on the roster, so everyone's going to hit at least once. Ground ball to first. Parker Roloff with the play. One up, one down here in the fourth. And I'm sure Coon Rapids realizes that that 10 run rule could come into play if they don't play really tight defense here in the fourth inning because it's 10 runs after four. Well, that's a huge first out recorded because now you got McAllister, Smith, and Weathers. And oh, yeah, Mr. Gaiman behind now. And, and Kale McAllister blasted this ball in the second inning way over the right center field wall. And he has not recorded an out in this ball game. Big cut there by McAllister. Single in the first, and a two-run shot in the second. Three home runs during the regional. Sits on the breaking ball and hacks it down the line. Over Roloff into foul ground down the right field line. And it's a double for McAllister. Seven total bases job. today for Kale. Now just a triple short of the cycle and throwing a shutout himself. Three for three. Three shutout innings, and here comes Missouri in the top of this order. Blake Smith, who also hit a homer in his last at bat. First time facing Aiden Widmer Murray against Antonio Manos. Jumped on that first one and sent it to deep center field, and this is going to skip away from Taylor. And now McAllister's at third. Here's that home run. And this was punch. Yeah, it was. And you see the solid off finish, but he had already transferred all the energy he needed to. That ball might be, the, that's the farthest one we've seen. I'm not going to say might be. That is the farthest one we've seen here in this tournament on the road over the center field wall. Yeah. Missed it that time, 2 and 1. Stay back on the curve, look for the fastball. That was his seventh home run since the start of district play. Mom's here in attendance. Blake's uh, brother Brady played here in 2011. That's the neat thing about these mm -hmm. little leagues that make repeat appearances. Sometimes brothers, cousins have played. That two on with one out. And Devron Weathers coming up. Best power threat for Webb City. And keep in mind, a, a home run makes it 10 0. And then that 10 run rule would loom large. Mm -hmm. Here in the fourth inning, it is now in effect. Of course, Minnesota will get their turn up in the bottom half no matter what happens. But certainly in play here with the dangerous Devron Weathers stepping up to bat. Runner goes, there's the throw, and it goes into center field over Robidoux. McAllister scores, and Smith gets to third. Eight-nothing, hey, Missouri. Drive him in. How do you use your wheels, kid? Well, you, you, not surprised that Blake Smith tried to steal that base. Obviously, we, we've talked about his speed. Another run scores now, eight to nothing. As Blake Smith forces the issue on the bases and creates another run for Team Missouri. Hit hard, base hit. Second hit for Devron Weathers. It's 9-0 Missouri as Blake Smith scores. 
Webb City has scored in every inning here today. And there's that 10 run rule. And again, you mentioned it, Chris. Coon Rapids would still get to hit in the bottom of the fourth, but Webb City with an opportunity here and one of their best hitters up there in Cole Gaiman. This guy has been swinging it as good as anybody in this region. Not the biggest bat in this lineup, but maybe the most consistent has barreled everything up. Last couple days, you see Widmer Murray showing some frustration. We got time. And Jason Halverson's going to come out, make a trip to the mound to visit with Aiden Widmer Murray. Hey, we've talked all year about how we want to act in these in these types of moments. All right, it's frustrating, it's hard, right? But that's the way things go sometimes. All right, you can't show emotion when you're on the mound under any circumstance. Right? You're doing good. We've got a little unfortunate bounces, and that's the way it goes. You guys keep fighting, okay? Keep your heads up, okay, guys? Do as best you can to keep your head in this thing, all right? Let's go. Let's go, boys. Here we go. The number six on kids' hats for Coon Rapids. That's in honor of Jim Scheid, a District 1 umpire from Coon Rapids. Recently lost a battle with cancer. They've been honoring him with that number on their hats. Passed away earlier this month. Former Wisconsin hockey player was Jim Scheid. The 1-0. Hit hard. Nice play by Robin in his second for one. Not in time on the double play. They did get one, and that's a big out for Minnesota. They're trying to avoid that 10 run rule coming into play. Oh, it's a huge out. And right now, they got to take their victories where they get them, and they're going to get a chance to keep this game alive if, if they get off the field here with just nine runs. And obviously, a chance to respond offensively. But Rabadou, who's had some balls smoked at him, made a very nice play there to retire Weathers at second base. Rick Roloff is coming out. He's going to actually make a pitching change here. He is the manager for Minnesota, 46 years old, a manager at a manufacturing facility in Plymouth, Minnesota, when he's not coaching literally. So a pitching change for Minnesota. They're down 9 nothing, And we're back in Indianapolis in a moment. Welcome back to the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, the final in the Midwest between Webb City, Missouri and Coon Rapids, Minnesota. All Webb City right now leading 9 nothing with two outs in the top of the fourth. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. And Noah Mitchell is going to be the pinch hitter here for Missouri. You ready? You ready? All right, Jack go, Velocity called on to pitch. And we have seen Velocity in this regional pitch very well in relief for Minnesota. He came on yesterday. And or excuse me, two days ago, and really slammed the door shut on that ball game. Swing and a miss by Noah Mitchell. He's been a valuable relief pitcher during this run for Webb City, getting a chance to hit here. Tragen Parker, special pinch runner over at first. And Parker is back. This will be a big out for Minnesota. Take some pressure off them in the bottom of the fourth. But that's hit well toward the gap. It's going to run to the wall. Parker on his way to third. He's going to be waved. Here comes the throw. Not in time, and it's 10 0. That's the run Missouri was looking for. As Noah Mitchell, the pinch hitter, delivers. Off the bench and squares it up to the right center field gap. A beautiful swing on a hanging breaking ball. Terrific direction on that path as he drives that ball into right center field. We've seen a couple sawed off finishes from this Webb 
City team, but the 10th run of the game for Missouri as we watch some yeah. fundamental base running here. Watch Parker as he comes around second base. He's going to pick up his coach and get waved on home. Now 10 to nothing, Missouri. A scoots away, but Taylor's going to track it down in time to keep Mitchell at second. You, in your professional career, and I'm sure in your college and high school career, your Little League career, called on to pinch hit. That's not an easy thing to do to no. come on in a situation like that and deliver. Not at all. That, that very impressive there from Noah Mitchell. This one hit on the ground. Wisen in the backhand play and a strong throw across the diamond. That's going to end the inning, but it's 10-0. Minnesota needs to get something going to keep this game alive. Bring back with me something that no other team can provide but you guys. That's pride. We get one shot to get it right. We get one shot to so hold on tight. We get one shot to so let it. You had the whole place jumping. Final line, they like sportsmen. They like guys who don't quit. They like guys who play the game the right way. That's us. We'll be the boys of summer. One of the greatest events during the ESPN year. Little League World Series, which starts August 20th, runs for 10 days in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Will be there wall to wall, and one of these teams is going to be there. And right now, it looks like Missouri, as Minnesota needs to score at least one here to extend this game as that 10 run rule comes into play. Here's our Honda game summary 10 runs on nine hits. McAllister, Smith, Weathers and Gaiman, the top four in the order, not just in this one, but throughout the entire regional, have been terrific. Little League provides free web-based training resources to its local league's coaches and parents. Launching in the fall of 2015, Little League will introduce Little League University, littleleagueu.org, for more information. He's Chris Burke, former major leaguer. I'm Clay Matfin. And it is crunch time now for Coon Rapids Cardinal Little League out of Minnesota. Parker Roloff stands in there to lead off the fourth inning. And that 10 run rule in Little League. After four down 10, game's over. Beginning, obviously, this is it. Their season on the line right here. And McAllister just really hasn't given them much, has been so consistent. I think just the one, we got a walk and two walks and a hit by pitch. For the most part, he has made Minnesota earn it. And look at that pitch count down there. The maximum in Little League is 85. Look at how efficient he has been so far. And of course, the two outs in last inning really helped because they had him on the ropes and ran themselves out of a potential big inning. Certainly saved his pitch count. A 2 1 line drive, base hit. That's what Minnesota needs. Somebody to light a spark, and it's Parker Roloff with a leadoff single for Minnesota. Parker Roloff, his dad, manager Rick Roloff's got to be proud of this boy right here as he delivers a big hit. Not the fleetest of foot, so we're going to get a special pinch runner for him, but. Enjoy a good high five here from coach. You've earned it, young man. Nice swing. And Caleb Chesser, who is the team unicyclist, will be the special pinch runner. You ever so, given that a run? No, I, I, or a pogo stick, which he is also very good at. Talented kid. Popped up right side. Calling for it. Cole Gaiman makes the catch. And Ricky Petroff is a quick out. Sunday Night Baseball has two of the game's best center fielders in Kansas City Lorenzo Kane and the Royals playing host to Mike Trout and the Angels. Sunday Night Countdown gets the coverage started at 7 Eastern, followed by the Angels and Royals at 8 on ESPN and watch ESPN. Angels in that second wild card spot. The Royals have that big lead in the American League Central right now over the Twins. Here's Diego Wisen in 0 for 1 today. That comebacker to McAllister in the second inning. Minnesota just needs one run to extend this game.
when McAllister just keeps painting the corner. Yeah, it looks like he, the strike zone. he can smell it right now. It looks like he can really feel the finish of this ball game. Left side through, base hit. Wise it. And the ball gets away. Here comes another throw to the bag at third. They don't get him. Everybody moves up. Well, that was a risky advance again. Chester, but he got there. <laughs> they keep taking chances, Clay, and I tell you what, Makai Gerard had a chance to make a play and was just a little too quick with the catch and tag, and the ball tipped off the edge of his glove as he's wising him with a really good swing. He drives the ball into left field, and now we're going to get a relay here to Gerard as the ball gets away momentarily. But he just doesn't quite finish that catch. And now second and third here with one out. Guys, we're fine because we're up. We're up 10, OK? You know, we get outs. We get outs here. We get outs here. Hey, if it's hit hard to you looking back and throw across, if they score one, that's fine. We'll get the kids that haven't got the bat a chance to bat, OK? All right? Hey, work ahead. Block everything. Have fun. Chin's up. Chin's up. Let's go. Said it before, a lot of times it's it's just keeping the kids in the right frame of mind. That's the job of these coaches and managers. They're up 10, and yet somehow they're depressed. <laughs> well, these kids smell it now. Yeah. They're, they're wanting to finish this game off, right. and you can hear them in that huddle. Yeah, but we want to end it right here. And so you got to keep their minds straight of the fact that the ultimate goal is to win the ball game, however you need to do it. You don't want to panic here trying to get a 10-run roll when you still got a 10-run cushion. Jack Velocity is going to hit for Minnesota for the first time today. He was called on to pitch last half inning. Minnesota looking for a run to avoid the 10 run rule. Meanwhile, Missouri trying to become the third team from that state to reach Williamsport. There's Chesser at third. He would keep this game alive should he score. It's outside for McAllister. His pitch count now at 59. So you've been very impressed with Eli Goddard behind the plate in a, in a regional where we've seen a lot of balls to the backstop. Eli has been very good back there for this Missouri club. Foul ball, two balls and two strikes. Second time in three years that Coon Rapids is in the Midwest final, Coon Rapids and over American lost to Urbandale, Iowa in 2013 in this region hey, final. Get him in here. Help your own cause here. Cardinal now money? trying to avoid the 10 run rule here in the fourth. 2 2. Full count. Ball doesn't get far enough away as Goddard pounces. Keeps that runner at third base and now on a full count. It's up to McAllister, did not try to do too much as you see Goddard get in front of this ball and able to keep it close enough to keep the runner at third base. Full count. Called strike three as Velocity goes down looking. Huge out for McAllister. That's his third strikeout. And now Minnesota's down to its last out. All right, we're going to see a good run and fastball on the inside part of the plate. And again, Goddard does a good job of making that pitch get a strike call on a borderline pitch. The call goes Missouri's way, and looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter here for Minnesota. Sam Halverson is going to hit. Meanwhile, a conference on the mound. One thing, I love you. I love you more than anything in the world. Just go ahead and have fun, all right, buddy? That is father to son. It's been an emotional ride for these kids and the parents, and especially the parents who are coaches. Minnesota down to its last out. Here's Sam Halverson, his dad in the third base coach's box. Puts it in play. The first baseman Weather steps on the bag, and Missouri has won it. Webb City's going to Williamsport.
For the first time since 2002, a team from Webb City will be in the Little League World Series. This is just the third team from the Show Me State going to Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at our Kellogg's Frosted Flakes moments of the game. Those back-to-back -back homers, real turning point. Yeah, a couple big swings from the Missouri Club, McAllister and Smith, and this top four hitters in the Missouri lineup are so dangerous. Really the catalyst for this offense for the entire tournament. And those two swings right there really catapulted this club now on to Williamsport. And congratulations to both teams, but especially Missouri, who will represent this region in the Little League World Series. Pearland, Texas, Taylor, South Carolina. They'd already punched tickets. And now to Webb City, heading to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The top four hitters today, McAllister, Smith, Weathers, and Gaiman, eight for 11. Nine runs scored, they drove in five. They really led this team this week, especially coming through the losers, bracket. They did, so much, so much fun, so much emotion as you see such great sportsmanship. And I tell you what, what a tournament it was in the Midwest region, but Missouri, rightfully so, will be your champion out of this region.